means of people are placing their faith in the wrong things. Everyone has faith in something. Even evolutionists have to accept what they are believing by faith. An atheist has faith that when he dies he isn't going to exist. And Paul gives us some things to place our faith in. In Romans 1, 16 and 17 it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And in verse 17, the therein is referring to the gospel. In verse 16, saving faith is when you place your faith in the gospel. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, and you should have your faith in, first of all, the righteousness of God. If you have your faith in that, then your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 3.22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Romans 10.3 For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Your faith is placed in Jesus Christ, who did all of the work for you. God even gives you enough faith to be saved. Notice Paul said in Romans 1.17, The just shall live by faith. And he is quoting Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4, but he quotes it just a little different, because it says in Habakkuk 2.4, Behold his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So the Holy Spirit had Paul write it this way to show a difference between Old Testament faith and New Testament faith. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is Old Testament faith to New Testament faith. The difference is, in the New Testament you place your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ and God is the one who gave you that faith as a gift. It is the faith of Jesus Christ. Romans 3.22 says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Galatians 2.16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.22, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ. But as it says in Habakkuk 2.4, For the Old Testament saint, it was his faith. For the New Testament Christian, having the faith to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is a gift of God, as it says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. After a man has been born again, he needs to place his faith in the truth. What is the truth? It is the words of God. And Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So what do you need to place your faith in? You need to place your faith in the truth. A person who holds the truth in unrighteousness is a man who has the words of God in his hand and he refuses to take it as it stands. He has to change it and pervert it. A man does this to be his own final authority. By doing this, he becomes his own God and takes the same position as people like Anton LaVey, Aleister Crowley, Marilyn Manson, Madame Blavatsky, and any other hell-bound Satanist. As the verse said, it is ungodly and unrighteous to change what God said. The first person who did it was Satan in the Garden of Eden, and the Bible says he was subtle. So you can see the subtle attacks on major doctrines in the NIV, the RSV, the ASV, the NKJV, and any other modern perversion of the Bible. Men hold the truth in unrighteousness when they change what God said. But a Christian should have his faith in the truth. 
you sh you should have enough faith in the truth to where you would never change one word of the Bible. Not only this, but you should have your faith in what God has shown you. Romans 1.19 says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. God has shown some things to men who changed his book. He has shown many things to man. He has shown himself in their conscience. Notice it said, Because that which may be known of God is manif manifest in them. God has shown himself in their conscience, but they sear it with a hot iron, and it becomes defiled, as the Bible talks about in Titus 1.15. For a man to change as many verses and words in these modern Bibles, his conscience has to be destroyed. God has revealed himself to men through his wrath, as it says in verse 18 of Romans 1. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. God flooded the earth in the days of Noah, and to this day you see a rainbow in the sky. This reminds you that God once destroyed the earth with a flood, and God chose his wrath through earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, and so on and so forth. God has shown himself through nature. Romans 1.20, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Can the watch that's on your wrist put itself together, or did someone put it together? Did someone throw this universe together, or has it always just been here? God shows things that are invisible by things that are visible. Notice it says, even his eternal power and Godhead. God shows the Godhead which is invisible through the sun, the S-U-N sun that is visible. The sun has three types of rays, alpha, beta, and gamma. The alpha rays are light, that, light rays that can be seen but not felt, which is like Jesus Christ. The beta rays are heat rays that can be felt but not seen like the Holy Spirit. And the gamma rays are actinic rays that cannot be seen nor felt. And that's like God the Father. So God has shown the Godhead in the sun. The sun being visible. The Godhead invisible. God has shown you some things. You should put your faith in what God has shown you. If God has shown you the Godhead through things that are visible... Then why don't you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? He has even made you a three-part being. You have a body, a soul, and a spirit. And God has a body, Jesus Christ, a soul, God the Father, and a spirit, the Holy Ghost. If you read the Bible and believe it, God will show you some things. If you read the Bible and don't believe it, then God won't show you anything else. And Solomon spoke... 3,000 Proverbs, and he spake of things you could see to illustrate something that you couldn't see. 1 Kings 4.33 says, And he spake of trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even into the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes. So God has in nature things that represent something in man, that you can't see. False prophets are called wolves. Unsaved men are called dogs. Unsaved women are called pigs. And in the Bible, Christians are called sheep. The Antichrist is called a beast. Owls and unclean birds represent unclean spirits that you can't see. In the Bible, prayer warriors are like high-flying eagle, eagles. As it says in Isaiah 40, 31, Jesus Christ was a lamb at his first coming, and he's going to be a lion at his second coming. Satan is called a serpent in Genesis 3, and Pharisees are referred to as vipers. So you can see all throughout the Bible, God uses something you can see to illustrate something that you can't see. What about the heathen who have never heard or read the Bible? 
God has shown himself to them as well. It says in Psalms 19, 1 through 4, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day other uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth the knowledge. There is no speech nor language, where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all their line is gone out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. God's voice is heard. Any honest man who looks up at the stars knows that there is something out there bigger than he is. The problem with people who live in real big cities is they only see man-made lights instead of the lights that God made himself. What happens to a man that won't believe what God has shown them? Romans 1.21 says, because, when they knew, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So they knew God, but they glorified him not as God, and were unthankful. So as a result, they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. When a man changes the book, then God doesn't give him any more light. Darkness is a sign of sin, judgment, and catastrophe in the scriptures. And atheists and Bible correctors have a heart problem. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They have heart trouble. They became vain in their imaginations. Imaginations are almost always spoken of in a very negative way in the Bible. In Genesis 6, 5, it says, Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 8, 21, For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Jeremiah 3, 17, Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. Where they, uh, when they built the Tower of Babel, God said this in Genesis 11:6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. People sit around and imagine themselves living someone else's life. They imagine perverted things and everything wicked. All of these kids' movies talking about use your imagination. I don't think that that is good advice. If you imagine what Disney would have you imagine, then you would live in a fantasy land with witches, wizards, fairies, trolls, butches, dykes, queers, magic, jungle music, while riding on the Polar Express. And the Bible says filthy dreamers defile the flesh. No wonder it is so hard to have a good thought life when the adults in your life had you watching a woman kissing a giant dog in the mouth on beauty and the beast the bible says thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination but it also mentions bestiality as well right after that and what do you think beauty and the beast is and in proverbs six eighteen, one of the seven things the lord hates is a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations we need to keep our imaginations in check. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We need to be thinking about whatsoever things are pure, honest, lovely, have good report, and so on and so forth. And not having dirty imaginations. Dirty imaginations is what have caused a lot of Bible words to be perverted. People use words that are in the Bible as cuss words. Words like ass, bastard, piss, Peter, John, hell, damned, and so on and so forth. I mean, if a snippet of what I just said was played, then people would think I was cussing if they took it out of context. If you said those words, even if they are in the right context... Someone with a dirty imagination would probably say, I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. Why are you cussing? It's because they're the one with the dirty imagination. So we should have faith in what God shows us. Not only this, but we should have faith in the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of man. If you listen to James White, 
and believe what he says about the King James Bible, then you will have your faith shaken when it comes to God's words. Romans 1.22 says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. These guys who claim to be college professors profess to be wise, but they are fools if they reject God and what God said. These professors say in their heart there is no God, and they are fools according to the one who made everything. 1 Corinthians 1.25 says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I'd rather place my faith in the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of man. I'd rather trust in the one who is sitting in heavenly places, looking down at us like we look down at a snow globe. Or like we look down at an anthill. But it's actually even worse than that. Isaiah 57, 15 says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. 1 Corinthians 3, 18 and 19 says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. A lot of people go to a school that makes them doubt the words of God and doubt the existence of God. This makes the saying, Don't be a fool, stay in school not to make any sense because if the school is making you be an atheist who hates God then you would be a fool to stay if you're going to be a fool then be a fool for Christ's sake not only should you place your faith in God because of his wisdom but because he is the uncorruptible God Romans 1 23 through 25 says and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than their creator who is blessed forever amen God is everlasting but man dies and goes back to the dust. Men are nothing but animated mud balls of sin. And men can only cover up their stink of sin temporarily with soap and right guard. But they always end up stinking. Verse 24 says, God gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. When men reject God in the Bible, they always go down a road of vile sin. This country can either go back to the Bible or back to the jungle. They're trying to live like Adam and Eve in the garden before they fell. They think they can walk around naked without shame, but we aren't under the Edenic covenant anymore. Adam and Eve sinned and now we have a sin nature and need the Lord Jesus Christ to save us from sin. And last but not least, we should have our faith in the Creator and not the creature. Romans 1.25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Why would I put my faith in the creature instead of put, putting my faith in the one that made the creatures? All of these people are putting their faith in Richard Dawkins and Charles Darwin or Bill Maher or any other atheist. But I'm not trusting in their science falsely so called I'm going to trust in Jesus Christ and I'm not going to risk going to hell by trusting in the foolishness of these atheists I'm going to trust in the one who made everything which is Jesus Christ if you look at Colossians 1 14 through 20 it says in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, 
the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So Jesus Christ is the one that created everything, and I'm going to place my faith in the creator and not the creature. But these men change the truth of God into a lie because they want, don't want to submit to the truth. They want the truth to submit to them. Just like an atheist doesn't want to submit to God, he only wants to answer to himself. They have the do what thou wilt philosophy. And Romans 1.23 says, And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. People don't like the God of the Bible, so they make up their own God and change him into something of their liking. We are living in a time of celebrity gods. There are people who literally cut their self for Beyonce, just like men were cutting their self for Baal in the Old Testament. People are making God in the image they want him to be. Baby Christians everywhere have this idea that God is cool and hip and listens to Toby Mac and Lecrae and Amy Grant and the drummer from Korn. And they really think that God was in the making of Duck Dynasty and the Medea movie series. God is a gracious God, but they go overboard on the grace like Joseph Prince to the point that there is no wrath of God. But let's not be like this lost world or like the atheists or Bible correctors or worldly Christians. Let's put our faith in what God said. Let's put our faith in the true God of the Bible. But this has been Romans chapter 1 verses 7 through 17 through 25 about what to place your faith in.